everybody and welcome back to Finding Fashion. Today I'm really excited to be joined by Catherine Sprunt, who is Copy Manager at Harrods. Thanks so much for joining me, Catherine. It's lovely to see you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Oh, no, it's brilliant to have you on. Can you tell me a little bit more about what being a Copy Manager at Har Harrods sorry, entails? Uh, yes, so I'm Copy Manager for Harrods.com. Um, and we produce all of the product descriptions that appear on the Harrods website. Um, being a luxury department store that spans everything from, um, you know, designer dresses and handbags to champagne, um, electrical products and uh, biscuits. So we kind of do a little bit of everything. Um, and my team write all of the product descriptions. So there's 20, 20 across the team. So we're quite a big team and we work from our photo studio in um, City Road, which is around Angel. Um, obviously not at the minute due to COVID, we're all working from home and kind of making things work as we can. But usually we'd be there with our photographers and stylists. So your job basically means that you're talking people into shopping all the time, which must mean that it's quite an expensive job for you as well. Well, you know, <laughs> There we, you know, there are lots of things to tempt us, but um, mostly out of our price range as well. But there are plenty of things at Harrods that are affordable for the everyday person as well. <laughs> so earlier on in your career and how we know each other uh, was working at Look Magazine. And whilst you were there, you worked on creating um, content for the website across like fashion and beauty. And it was actually a really super successful website launch. What were the key takeaways that you took from that position, which you kind of, that are still with you now in terms of skill sets? Um, I think there are so many and so many related to content as well. But um, Look was actually my very first internship and turned into my very first job and I was freelance there. Um, so a lot of the takeaways that I have are actually just around jobs in general. And I'd say the biggest takeaway is just to ask questions and to not feel, um, you not not feel embarrassed for not knowing the answer to things or not knowing how to do things straight away. I think um, that was something that I wasn't great at at the beginning. I was always really shy. And I think um, one thing that makes me cringe is that I didn't want to ask how to make a cup of tea in the kitchen or where the tea bags were or where the, you know, where everything was kept and how the hot water tap was kept. So I just pretended I didn't like tea. Um, <laughs> for probably two months and I love tea. Um, and so that was just, a, you know, a really silly thing on my part, but my takeaway would be that there's no stupid questions um, where, you know, particularly when you're starting out, it's really important just to make sure that you ask the right questions so that you do things right the first time. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, for those doing internships to remember as well that it's for you, it's for you to learn. It's not just for the company to have someone working there, but for you to get those skills as well. Um, and then in terms of, excuse me, dog, dog sparking. <laughs> um, yeah, and then in terms of skills on the content side, so what I was doing was producing a lot of um, image galleries and shopping galleries, and that was kind of celebrity photos and um, click through affiliate links and so on. And what I really learned was that you really, even if you're doing quite repetitive tasks, you really have to pay the same level of detail and really, um, you know, the first photo you upload, you should pay as much attention as the hundredth photo you upload because they're all just important as each other. And one, you know, that hundredth photo that you got tired uploading and you did it slightly wrong could be the first photo that someone clicks on when they come on the website. So everything is just, you know, all the small details are just as important as everything else. So prior to working at Harrods, you also went on after look to work at ASOS as a copywriter, which, you know, with new products launching on that website every single day, it must have been a really fast paced job. Now, how did you manage working to tight deadlines for, you know, such a renowned online website? It was, it was really fast paced, but I loved ASOS. Um, and it was somewhere that I always wanted to work when I was at uni. Um, so I was really lucky to be there. And I'd say that I think for some people, the fast paced sort of workflow really suits them. And for me, that was definitely true. I think um, particularly with product copy, I think this is true of lots of different companies. You have really tight daily deadlines, but it means that you don't have to manage your time beyond that day. You know what you've got to do, you know exactly what you need to get through. And it's kind of to your own, um, you know, you get through it at your own pace as long as you're finished. And there's nothing, you don't have to worry too much kind of about staggering deadlines through the month or so on. 
Um, so yeah, I'd say that that fast paced lifestyle really suited me and still suits me. And that's probably why I'm still doing, um, still doing product copy. Um, but I would, yeah, I think, um, what was I going to say? <laughs> also, touch typing has really served me well. So I think all of the kind of, um, probably all of the people who've grown up now in this digital age who are coming through and looking for jobs they're you know for them typing is a skill that they've been doing probably since they were born but um for the older generation of us that you know learning how to type and being able to type as fast as you can think is a really good skill mm -hmm. um so I'd say that's probably the thing that served me the best in my in my early career anyway did you find it hard to be constantly coming up with different product product descriptions so it kind of varies I think at ASOS we had a more kind of formulaic style so it would um you know it was slightly more listy whereas at Harrods we write fewer product descriptions than we did at Harrods still a, still a big number particularly for our junior copywriters um so at the time with ASOS it wasn't too difficult because it was more about just describing the product um and just getting through as many as possible whereas with Harrods it is a, it is a challenge to be able to come up with new things continually but I think um particularly for my team anyway the longer that they've been in the role they just know these things it comes quite naturally the more you do it the more you kind of get better at doing it mm -hmm. so whilst you've been at Harrods um having done a bit of scouting around on your LinkedIn I see that you've been there for over eight years now which is yeah. incredible and you've risen the ranks from copywriter to lead copywriter to now copy manager there. What do you think has been really key to the progression at Harrods? I think um, it's tricky to say, I don't wanna say that I was in the right place at the right time, but I think part of that comes from making career decisions earlier on that influenced the path that I've taken. So when I left ASOS, there wasn't kind of too much progression in the team. And I joined Harrods and it was a small team of, I think five copywriters at the time, and now we're 20. Um, and there was no, there wasn't a team structure. Everyone was copywriters and we all did the same thing. And as I've been there for such a long time, those opportunities have come up. Um, and I think maybe a couple of years into the role, I knew I'd always kind of thought maybe I wanted to do a more editorial role, maybe work in magazines. And I think I decided that actually product copy was what I enjoyed, what I excelled at. Um, and if I stayed in this role and the, and the team continued to grow like it did, that more opportunities would come up. So I think it, as much as it's kind of right place and right time, it's putting yourself into the right place to make sure that you can um, go for the things when they come up and make, you know, make people know that you're there and that you're interested. And saying yes to opportunities as well. Like I always think like in during my career, like I've always said yes to opportunities because yeah. you never know where it's going to lead you and who you're going to meet and what skills you're going to learn. So exactly. you always sometimes have to take those leaps of faith when it feels right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and I'd say, you know, for anybody looking, I think finding a place where you start in a small team really means that you can kind of make your mark on on where you where your career goes. I completely agree. The places that I like interned and I worked at when I was, you know, early on in my career, the smaller teams, I always found that I learned so much more and like made my mark, like you said, and, you know, got really yeah. stuck in and boosted my skill set more than the places with the big teams. So the fact that you joined Harrods when it was such a small team meant that you could really shape your role. Yeah, exactly. So during your career, not just at Harrods, but everywhere else that you've worked, you've written everything from things like homepage sales to profit driving emails, um, reactive editorial content as well. Like you've done interviews and features as well. What do you think is pivotal to being a top performing writer for the digital sphere? I think it's really knowing your audience and understanding how they're going to use that content. Um, so if you're doing an email, you know, you know that you need to grab them, you need somebody to open the email. And then once they're in, you've got to keep their attention. And the same as for product copy, like as much as some of the products that we sell are so incredible, you could write a whole page about them. Somebody who's shopping online probably just wants the highlights of something, wants to know, wants something that's going to draw them in and go, oh, yeah, I need that. Um, but actually, they don't need a full kind of essay about it. Um, and particularly... I mean, as well with Harrods, because we've got um, 
great customer services team. A lot of our shoppers know that they can then call on that team to find out more information if they really need it. Um, yeah, so it's, I think it's really just understanding what the customer is there to do um, and how you can help them to do it. So understanding your customer is so important, whether you're working for a brand or if you're writing for an editorial title as well. What does go into understanding your audience and how do you use those insights to shape the tone of voice in which you're writing? Um, so it's definitely communication with the wider business and knowing the people who have the information that could help you. So with our marketing and our social teams, they are able to have insight into who's shopping and who our customer is, um, and then really honing into what that customer wants um, and how they want to be spoken to. Mm -hmm. But because it's digital, it does mean that you get such a wide variety of people shopping on your on your website because you know it doesn't mean you don't need them to walk through the doors they can just click on the page and if you're if you're the top hit on google then that's what they're going to do so i think just um just yes speaking to that customer and making sure that they get what they've come for when they land on the page is really important in holding them and also i think with a lot of brands anyway it's not just what you say but it's what you don't say so maybe avoiding certain language stereotypes um, and things that are going to alienate customers. So I read that recently that Harrods have recently launched their own purpose-built studio which houses everything from photography, production, styling and copy. Obviously you're working at home at the moment but you know what is the kind of the idea behind putting everybody under the same roof? Um, the studio is absolutely amazing it's it a huge incredible. space in city road it's massive um it's really it's really cool and it just gives so much more flexibility to the way we work so previously when i joined harrods um we were in our head office in hammersmith the copy team and then we had a um a small team of stylists who worked in a studio in a third party studio along with um photographers and more stylists from that company and it just meant that there was a bit of a disconnect between um, us receiving the products in the head office and writing about them and not actually seeing them on the model, seeing them in movement and just having that kind of studio energy as well, which is so different to an office. Um, so when we then we joined with that third party studio and that just um, like took the turnaround time of a product from about a week to about three days mm -hmm. um, to get it shot and copied and sent back to um, the store. So that was really exciting. And then in January, we brought the whole studio in-house. So all the photographers, all the stylists, all the copywriters and the production team are Harrods employees. And it just makes the whole thing so much more cohesive. Everybody's on the same page and everyone's just really excited to be there. And I think, as I said before, it helps you kind of make your mark on your role as well to be part of this big creative team. Um, yeah, so it's really exciting. It means that we can turn things around much quicker, be much more flexible and um, have that ongoing dialogue with the photographers and the stylists, which is so important now that we're working from home. So our photographers and stylists are in the studio um, shooting all the product and then the copywriters are all at home. Mm -hmm. But knowing that we have that connection with them means we can we can speak to them through the day on chat or however that may be um, and get that information as if we were in the studio. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely miss being there. I bet you do. And it'd be yeah. so exciting to eventually be able to go yeah. back and use that incredible studio space. Yeah, exactly. I think, um, I don't know, we haven't, nobody's missed the keys for the microwaves, but um, <laughs> <laughs> once we're back together, it'd be brilliant. <laughs> so you mentioned earlier that as a copywriter, you write everything, product descriptions about everything from handbags to champagne. Yeah. How do you kind of expand your knowledge so that you're really experienced and best equipped to write about so many different product areas? Exactly. So quite a lot of our writers have backgrounds in kind of fashion and journalism, and they might never have written about wine before and maybe drunk plenty of it. But, you know, just a <laughs> kind of five pound bottle from the off license, not the not the prestigious um, wine that we have. So it, there is a lot of learning on the job, but with those kind of specialist products. Um, we get we might get given information about it and then it's about interpreting so it's not just research but also taking information and turning it into something that's digestible for maybe a collector who knows about the product they're reading about but also for someone who's come to the page and doesn't know anything about it so kind of finding that balance in the customers is really key um, but I think just 
being at the company and you know being in that role and writing products day in day out um just makes you familiarize yourself with the brands and then when they come in you know without having to look it up you know a brand's creative director or you know the usp of a harrods food product without having to kind of look that information up so that's really key but i think um I think people do surprise themselves because they come in with a fashion background and they, you know, they're really excited about the fashion products and then they find themselves writing about Christmas hampers and Christmas decorations <laughs> and find that they really like that niche as well. So it's quite exciting to be writing across all the different categories. How do you stay up to date with all of the activity across the brand? Because Harrods is obviously colossal and it sells absolutely everything. And, you know, you really must have to kind of be abreast as it were like with all of the activity across the brand but also external events which are going to help you tailor your writing is there anywhere that you kind of look or that helps you to tailor and write copy yeah so um I think it's always really inspiring to see what the rest of the store and the, the other creative operations in Harrods are up to see the windows and the collaborations that you know they might have been doing in designer boutiques and so on so we get a lot of inspiration from there um but then also just reading I think most of the team where they've come from that journalism background just love magazines newspapers um, and digesting all of that information in that way um I definitely, I've always loved magazines and um, I've got an app called Readly. I don't know if you know it, but it's um, it's like a kind of subscri subscription service app, but it has Vogue, Tatler, um, gardening magazines, which I'm really into at the minute. Um, you know, it has tech journals and things like that. So it's quite a really, it's quite a good place to have everything all in one spot and be able to scroll through um, on your tablet, particularly if you're kind of out and about. So that's really good. Um, and then, yeah, I guess exhibitions usually, you know, uh, events on at the V&A um, would always be a favourite and we try and kind of organise team outings there and stuff. Um, but yeah, definitely just reading, I think, and reading is really important as well to be reading competitors and seeing what um, what other websites are doing. So just always having that eye on um, on kind of what's going on digitally and in print as well. I'm going to have to get that Readly app. That sounds amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I need it in my life maybe I have a code <laughs> I'll message you <laughs> thanks so your team is responsible for writing copy for both online product descriptions but also um banner copy firstly for anybody who doesn't know can you explain what banner copy is and secondly yeah. Yeah. how do you project manage what copy is re required by deadlines by dates by like department um, yeah, so banner copy is the a kind of longer chunk of copy that will sit at the top of a page. Um, and so we have brand copy, which is just about the brand. So history about the brand, creative directors and so on, and kind of the key products that they make. Um, and then we also have banners on our um, product listing pages. So if you go into the website and you click on dresses, there will be a banner at the top about dresses. And if you click into cocktail dresses, then it would keep drilling down. Um, as you go and that's primarily for SEO so that's so that Google can find us and rank us on their um, on their search results so sometimes you know they're lovely pieces of copy but actually the, the kind of main purpose of them is for Google to be reading them rather than people mm -hmm. um, but people do because they are interesting and well written um, but yeah so we have a kind of briefing process and th this is one of those things that comes along when you um like as a company grows. So previously it would just be someone dropping an email saying, hey, can you write this? And now we have a big spreadsheet and all the different departments will drop in their requirements. Um, and then it goes to SEO to generate keywords. So it's just about keeping on top of that. And that's part of the process that I manage. And then um, kind of what's the word, commissioning that out to the team to make sure that everyone gets a chance to write them. Um, and ideally, you know, gets a chance to write on categories that they're kind of more interested in as well. Um, so it's fine. It sits alongside copy product copy really nicely because it, it does kind of require slowing down a little bit and spending a bit more time than you would on a product description. Um, so, yeah, it's a nice balance for the team, I think. How do you kind of boost your SEO performance with keywords? Because obviously there's so many different kind of facilities out there that help you with that. But is there certain mm -hmm. training or kind of in-house info that you get given in to enable you to boost the performance of your work well this is the thing it's always changing so you know 
previously when we first started out, it might have just been like stuff in as many keywords as possible. So if you're trying to drive traffic to a dress page, you want to say this dress, we've got dresses, blah, 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 dress, 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 dress um, previously. And as Google kind of gets smarter to this kind of text, they're saying, actually, you know, you've put dress in that copy so many times that it's clearly spam or, you know, they kind of penalize you for just stuffing keywords in. So it's constantly changing. So our SEO team kind of keep us abreast of um, the updates and the trends. Um, I think, yeah, so we get our information from them and then it's up to us to make sure that despite including keywords that might not seem natural um, in copy, that it still flows properly and it still makes sense. So the studio that you're going to be going back to and where they're working at the moment, I read that you shoot approximately 520,000 photographs a year, yeah. which is insane. What is the process like between those samples arriving in the studio, getting them shot and then publishing them online? Like, What's the process like? So even though it sounds like so many products, it's just a well-oiled machine. So the products arrive and they're checked in by a stock team. And then the production team will um, schedule them in depending on the capacities for the next day or the capacities for the week ahead and so much of it depends on what models we might have in which photographers are in who shoots model shots who shoots just um the still images um so there's a lot of planning and the production team just makes sure that everything just works seamlessly um so that we don't have to kind of worry too much um and then when it comes to allocating then i'll, I'll allocate the copy so that just means assigning the products that are due to be shot the next day and what's kind of unique about how it's about working in the in-house studio is that we sh we write the products in tandem to them being shot. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we really get a feel for the products and we can see them on set if we need to um, in normal times, obviously. Um, and then, yeah, all of the copy and the images are kind of wrapped up. Um, the images are retouched and then they can go online. I wanna say the turnaround is about three days, but maybe, you know, closer to five days. Um, but really the speed that everything happens is amazing. Is there a way that you are able to keep your copy snappy when you're having to write so many descriptions every day? I think that's that's the tricky part. Sometimes it's it can be harder to write quality over quantity, but it's just remembering that we don't need to write kind of swathes and swathes of copy. And I think the team are really good at adjusting that and, you know, not being very economical with their words and making sure that what we write is really easy to read and really engaging to the customer um so i think you know getting not waffling on and honing like i am now honing that <laughs> skill is um is definitely a skill and i think people people learn that quite quickly we do when we have new starters we do lots of training around um tone of voice and you know have them reading the harrods website so they really understand from the get-go what what it is that they need to be writing so I saw that you were actually recently recruiting for some junior copywriters. And I know that I'm going to have swathes of students wanting to be applying. What do you look for when you are recruiting kind of those junior entry level candidates? Yeah, those are really good positions because they're just great for someone starting out in the business. And actually, all of our copywriters started as juniors. Um, so in our team anyway, it's a really good entry point for progression and so on. Um, I'd just say that solid writing is the best starting point. Um, we can always shape kind of tone of voice and the knowledge of, around the product. It's okay if you don't know about, you know, 50,000 pound watches and so on, because none of us really <laughs> do naturally. Um, but, you know, having just faultless grammar and being able to put a really interesting sentence together um, with no typos. That's just the real starting point and anything else from there we can build on. Um, obviously we, you know, we want people who are passionate about the business, whether that's e-com, about fashion um, or any of the other facets that it might be. Um, they might just really like Harrods and that's fine too. Um, so yeah, having that writing skill is just what we look for first and foremost. And I think what we always try to do is make sure that people know it's a really fast paced role and it's not, um, you know, it's, it is quite different to maybe an editorial office where you might be doing a, a little bit of this and a little bit of that and it's still fast paced, but it's quite varied. Whereas for us, 
it can be repetitive doing the same thing day in day out but the beauty of it is that all you are doing is writing so you know you might be doing it the same thing all day every day but hopefully it's something that you love doing well thank you so much for talking to me today Catherine it's lovely to see you and you've provided such amazing insights into your job now and also your career so thank you so much thank you thank you so much for having me not at all and I hope to see you soon cheers bye-bye Bye.